Hello and welcome to part two of our series introducing the Arduino, the popular open source electronics prototyping platform that's in use all around the world by many enthusiasts. Now, more information on all of our projects, such as circuit diagrams, parts lists and component layouts, can of course be found on our website at youcontrolit.tv. In this Foundation Series video, we're going to look at how you can use the input and output pins of the Arduino to connect to the outside world. And this is really exciting because this is how you get to interconnect to other devices. We're going to add just a simple switch and an LED, but to establish the principles of how those input and output pins work. If the thought of taking bits of wire components such as resistors or switches and LEDs and putting them together is concerning, well, don't worry. When you are experimenting putting circuits together, the easy way is to use a very useful tool, what's known as a breadboard. Now, I've got a couple of examples here on the bench. Let's have a look at those. This is a standard size breadboard that is sold by many hobby electronic shops around the world. And you can build a fairly complex circuit with all the holes that you can use for connecting your components. For most of the circuits that we're going to build, this is actually a little bit too big. And what you can get is a half size breadboard. And we have one here. Uh, this is also mounted on a very useful plastic base from SparkFun Electronics. And it also allows you to connect an Arduino firmly onto the side, a couple of screw holes. So this is held on firmly. The half size breadboard is stuck on and it allows you to wire up your circuits without worrying about the pieces coming apart. So I would recommend something like this if you haven't got one already. So how does a breadboard work? Now, some of the holes are connected with other holes which allow you to attach wires and components together. Here's a very simple diagram showing how the holes on a breadboard are connected. There are two rows of pins at the top and bottom of each board that are used to distribute power, normally five volts DC and ground. In the center, there are short rows connected together with a gap in the center. In the short rows in the center of the board, you can connect a wire to one hole, for example, and one leg of a resistor to another, and they are now connected together as part of a circuit. Now we're going to use the small breadboard to build our simple circuit using the Arduino to monitor the status of a switch and when it's pressed to turn an LED on. The switch is the input device and the LED is the output device. But we first need to talk about a couple of basics of electronic circuit theory. Pull down or pull up resistors are used to stop a pin that is floating. And a pin that is floating in an electronic circuit can produce some erroneous readings. It might think it's positive one second and negative the next. So we will include a pull down resistor of 10k ohms value in our circuit. This keeps the pin pulled down so it won't float and produce erroneous results. The other is the current limiting resistor. A resistor is used with some devices such as an LED to stop the device taking too much current from the circuit driving it. That's really not what you want to do because taking too much current can destroy the component or even destroy the circuit driving it. On the Arduino, you can normally take a maximum of 40 milliamps on each of the output pins. So you do need to limit the current taken so it doesn't exceed that. Without going into the maths for an LED, a resistor of 220 ohms will work for our examples. Before we get started, let's have a look at the circuit we are going to build. So the Arduino board itself is the large rectangle on the left hand of the diagram. If we look at the top, you can see that the 5 volts is being taken out and taken to a switch, which is normally open. So when we press the switch, those contacts will close and the 5 volts will be connected down to D2, which is our input pin. Just something to note there, you'll see that that 
wire coming down from the switch to D2 crosses over another. Those wires are not joined. If they were joined, there would be a large circle or blob on that joint. So just so you don't get confused. Now also down on the D2 pin is this R1 resistor. This is the 10K pull down resistor that I mentioned. So if the switch is open, the pin D2 is being pulled down to ground by that resistor. The LED and the current limiting resistor on the right hand of the diagram, and you can see that the D13 is the output pin which comes through the current limiting resistor down to the LED and down to ground. So that's the circuit diagram. Now to make it a little bit easier, we've also got a diagram of how we are going to wire the circuit on the breadboard. So let's have a look at that now. Now if you're not familiar with how a breadboard works, hopefully our earlier explanation of how the holes on a breadboard are connected together and this diagram will help you. Just a quick example, you can see that the output pin from the Arduino is connected via a yellow wire which comes in near the top right to one of the rows of holes. That row of holes are all connected together and is connected to a resistor which goes to a leg of the LED. Now LEDs do have a polarity so the positive leg will be connected to the resistor and then the other leg is the negative leg which is you can see connected via a black wire to the ground or zero voltage bus on the side of the breadboard. Now hopefully you can understand how a breadboard works if you haven't used them before. Many people have. But a reminder that both the circuit diagram and the breadboard layout can be found on the ucontrolit.tv website. Let's now build the circuit. Now before I start a project, what I find very useful is to get a small tray and put all the components that I'm going to need in it. And that's what I have done here. So all the components and wires are there. And that's really useful because when you finish, you can check that you haven't forgotten to use something. Well, let's get on now and build that circuit. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is connect up the ground and the 5 volt lines onto the board. So I take one of the ground pins and connect that to the ground bus. The bus is this row here, so that is now a row of ground. And when I connect the 5 volts to the next row, that whole row will be 5 volts. I'll do that now. A small red wire. So we have the power connected. I'm first going to wire up the LED circuit. And you can do that by connecting the output pin, which is pin 13. And taking that around to one of these rows here. So pin 13 is now connected to this row. We then have to take that through a current limiting resistor, which we mentioned earlier, of 220 ohms. So we put, these have very small leads, legs. So we put that in there. And the other end in there. And then we will connect our LED to the end of it. Now this is going to be the positive end. So we need the positive end of the LED, which is the longer of the two leads. So into that row, we connect the positive and into whichever row we like, which we'll say is just the row next to it. We plug in the negative and then we will take another lead and connect that negative pin up to the negative 
on the power distribution bus. So the LED is now connected. So now we're going to connect up the switch. The switch we'll put in here. It has to be pressed fairly firmly so the legs connect in. Then on one side of the switch we want to connect the 5 volts. So again we'll take the, from the 5 volts bus at the top here and we'll connect it to that side of the switch. So the switch has four pins on it. The pins on this side are both connected together and the pins on this side are both connected together. But when you press the switch, then all four pins are connected together. So on the other side of the switch, we need to have our pull down resistor. So we'll plug that in to there and put that in over here. And that is going to go down to ground. So we'll put that a ground connector, ground wire from there to the ground bus. So that just leaves one more connection, which is going to be from pin two of the Leonardo, the Arduino Leonardo, which we're using here. And that is going to go around to the other side of the switch. So normally, without pressing the switch, the pin two is connected to the pull down resistor to ground. But when we press the switch, it'll be connected to the plus five volts. So it looks like the hardware is all done, but now we have to look at the software. We're going to use one of the examples co that come with the Arduino development environment. So let's load that up now. We're going to go to the Arduino, to File, Examples, Digital, and Button. Let's make this a little bit larger so you can read it. Let's go down to the code. Defines two buttons, two constants, which is the button pin two, which is the input, and the LED pin 13, which is our output. It sets one another variable for the state of the button. So first of all, we're saying it's zero, so the button is off. In the setup routine, it's just initializing the LED pin, which we know is pin 13 as output. And it's initializing the input pin, which we know is pin two as an input. So the hardware is set up. And then in the loop, all that the code is doing is that it is looking to see if the button state, and it's using the command digital read of button pin, which of course is pin two. So it reads pin two, puts it into button state. And if button state is high, then it turns the LED on by doing a digital write to the LED pin, which we know is 13 and setting it high. Otherwise, it turns the LED off. So it is pretty simple. It just loops around saying, is the pin, is the switch, the button pressed? And if it is, turn the LED on. And then obviously when you let go of the button, it then turns the LED off. We'll just verify it now being one of the examples. I'd be very surprised if there was an error. And we'll now just quickly connect up the Leonardo board. I've plugged in the lead and I am going to upload the program to it. And it says that it has done uploading. So pin 13, if you remember, there's an LED on the board, but we've wired up in parallel with it this additional LED. So if all is well and we press this button, the LED should come on. And there you are.
we have the circuit working. We have our Arduino communicating with a switch on input and with the LED on output. So luckily everything is working as we expected. Now if you build this circuit and it doesn't, just carefully check out the circuit and use the diagrams that we have on the website. One common mistake is putting the LED in the wrong way around. But you can of course check the LED that is on the Arduino board itself. So we've connected our first pieces of external hardware up to an Arduino using the breadboard. This is exciting. Just think what other things you might be able to hook up. So in the next part of our Arduino Foundation series, we'll be looking at one of the functions of the Arduino development environment, the serial monitor, and how that can help in logging information or testing or debugging your code. For more information, do check out our website at youcontrolit.tv and subscribe to our YouTube channel, You Control It. And you can also follow us on Twitter at YouControlitTV. Thanks for watching.